everybody, this is Anne and welcome back to Painting Big. Today we have a super short video for you. I just want to cover some things called additives. As you progress in your painting journey as a beginner, people are going to start mentioning this stuff to you. And it's going to sound like flow improvers, mediums and sealers, maybe even like slow dry or drying retarder. And you're going to be like, eh? So I just want to run over these super fast and that way you've got the foundation of what they do and why and when you would use them. Let's get to it. All right, so let's start with flow improver. Sadly, my flow improver does not have a label because, well, I mix it with water all the time. So <laughs> let's talk about a few of these things, these additives and stuff. Um, in the washes video, we covered kind of sealer, but we'll talk about it again a bit more. So the one that you do tend to run into first is gonna be flow improver. Um, Reaper has it, it's a 9106 item number and it's a pretty decent flow improver. It does uh, probably both things that flow improvers do equally well. So why would you use flow improver? So what flow improver does is it does two things. One is it keeps your paint in consistency when you thin it in your palette. So sometimes when you thin a paint with just water, you're going to notice that it kind of bottoms out. Like you notice that it separates and it's hard to keep in solution. So flow improver helps with that. It helps to keep your paint in solution when you thin it. The other thing though, that flow improver does probably the more important thing is that it breaks surface tension in your paint. And what that does is it allows you just like we were doing in the other video, it allows you to do these really fine lines. So when you're doing fine details, having a little bit of flow improver in your paint lets you do really, really thin, fine details, dots, eyeballs, you know, all sorts of patterns and things like that. And flow improver helps with that because when it breaks the surface tension of the paint, the paint comes off the brush easier. And that's what flow improvers real strength is. So that's why I mix it with my water. And most of the time when I thin my paint, I'm using just this mixture. It's about 10% flow improver and about 90% water. Um, just because a little extra never hurts. Now I do want to say one thing and that is that MSP paint Reaper master series has flow improver added in the base formulas. So you can really get away with just thinning MSP with water. Even so when I'm doing very small details like eyes and buckles and tiny freehand, I do add extra flow improver. Flow improver is also the one additive that you can get away with adding a lot of without really impacting a lot of stuff. This next one is not so much. So a lot of people don't know about the anti-shine additive, which is a shame because I think it might be the only real matting medium on the planet as far as miniatures paints go. This is the actual stuff that we use to make our paint more matte uh, when we're working in the Reaper paint lab. And we essentially changed up the formulation a little and bottled it up for you guys. And it is a very, very strong solution. So if you want to use it, say you've got a paint, let's say this dark blue was too, too terribly glossy. Like we used it on our model and it was shiny and we didn't like it. Different miniatures paints have different finishes, right? So maybe you find a line that you love the colors, but you don't like the finish and you wish it was more matte. So with this stuff, you want to use very little of it. Sometimes I'll even just pop the top off so I can get at it. You can see that it's quite goopy in its paste. Now this is one where it will benefit from you adding water over its, over its lifetime to keep it in solution, but you don't really need to if it's a fresh bottle. So I just reach in and I grab just a little bit on my brush, like that much. You can see how much it is next to this. That's very little. That's the majority of what I would add. I would not add any more. This is about five drops of paint and a drop of water, five or six drops of paint, and a drop of water. That little bit should be enough to make your paint significantly more matte. I would not add more than double that, absolutely, no matter what paint you're using. Uh, you will know if you've gone too far, always test your paint before you apply it after using this stuff because test it on like the bottom of a base or something, just to make sure. Because what will happen is that if you put too much in, it will frost. And then you'll know, uh oh, I went too far. In which case, time to mix a new puddle of paint. <laughs> so that's anti-shine additive. And it is, despite the fact that you have to be careful with how much you use, it is really, really useful because I do like using some other lines of paint sometimes and they do have glossier finishes than I like. I like the Master Series finish. And so for me, I like the ability to be able to matte something down, make it just a little bit more matte when I want to. 
So mediums and sealers we kind of talked about in the washes videos, right? Because I use brush on sealer in place of matte medium, or I will sometimes use a matte medium when I'm building washes. So sealers obviously are also meant to seal your model, but they can be used as mediums. Uh, gloss sealer can be used as a gloss medium and brush on sealer is more of a satin or matte. Actually, this is one of the things that works together with anti-shine additive. For example, if you find that the Reaper brush on sealer is maybe just a little bit too glossy, add a tiny bit of anti-shine additive and tune it to exactly the level you want. You could even add some right into the bottle until you get what you want. But remember that that medium does tend to settle out. See that little, little film down there? So you do need to shake up your sealer really well and get that back in solution. If you don't shake up your sealer really well, then essentially that matting agent will build up at the bottom. And after you've used like half of your sealer, the concentration will be so great, your sealer will start to actually frost. I had this happen to someone, so I know it does happen. So do shake your sealer up really well. If you really get worried that little, little dregs of it sitting down there isn't too bad, but you can always take a toothpick or the end of a brush and just get in there and stir it around and and back up into solutions. So that is another uh, thing that you can do. So those are my tips for working with brush on sealer in place of matte mediums. So the final one I don't have an example of, but it's called slow dry or drying retarder, any of those things. Reaper does put one out. Um, Liquitex slow dry was the most, you know, the one that was most used uh, when I was painting early in my painter life. What these things do is keep your paint wet longer. So if you're working on a wet palette, you might not even need them, right? Because your paint is already staying wet. But if you're working in a really arid climate or you're working with a dry palette like I do, you may find that you want your paint to stay wet a little bit longer. And so mixing in a little bit of those drying retarders or slow dry can help you. It can also help you because, because it keeps the paint open more on the model, it lets you blend it almost more like an oil paint. The downside to this, the reason that I actually don't have a bottle of it here and I don't tend to use it myself, is that it changes the finish of the paint and it also affects how well the paint sticks to the model. So if you're going to use it, this is kind of like the anti-shine additive, use very little of it. If you use too much, you're gonna notice your paint go glossy and you're also gonna notice that it rubs off the model a lot easier. So there we go, guys. There are your basic additives. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was educational for you. I hope you enjoyed it. We got two videos this month. And uh, I will be back at you next month with, I think, a lining video. What is lining, you wonder? Well, tune back in, you'll find out. Remember, I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash painting big. And I also stream on Twitch, on twitch.tv slash painting big. We do a stream on Saturdays at 3.30 USA Central Time. Thank you guys all for your support here on YouTube. I'm really excited at the number of views these videos are getting. I hope you tell your friends who are getting into the hobby that they can go and watch these and you know, hopefully it'll give them a little bit of a grounding, especially if they're looking at using some Reaper paint. All right, everybody, thank you so much. And this is Anne signing off.